This is AndyTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to check and reset the timing, if necessary, on a Singer Model 413. And this, this uh, type of procedure covers a couple dozen models that Singer made. So if, you're, if you have a Singer machine that, that has a timing belt, and uh, the belt and pulley system and everything looks very similar to this, this would probably work on your model. So um, by timing, of course, we're talking about the timing of the point of the needle to the point of the hook during the, the sewing cycle. They have to match up so that when the, the needle starts to pull up and the loop on the needle thread is formed, the hook is right there to grab that uh, little loop and pull the needle thread around the bobbin thread to form the lock stitch. And the first thing to do when you're going to check and, and take a look at this is to be sure that the needle bar is installed at the right height. Because if the height is off, the timing can be off. And uh, it's very easy to do. I'll show you how to do that here. Um, and if it's off uh, on a model like this, you're talking about one screw to correct the problem. So we'll just remove the face cover here so that we can see the needle bar, right? Okay. Here's the needle bar. And on just about every Singer needle bar, there are two little grooves, horizontal grooves, cut into the needle bar. And uh, they usually appear black because uh, oil and dust has gotten in them. But let me show you a picture of these, uh, of a needle bar up close, so you can see these two grooves if you're not familiar with them. And the top mark has to do with uh, setting the height of the needle bar, the upper mark. The bottom or lower mark uh, is used to when you're setting the timing of the needle point to the hook point. And that's a good way to remember them, that the top uh, mark is what you use for up above the needle bar here. And the lower mark is what you use down below for the uh, hook timing. Okay, so take a look at this uh, picture close up there. Okay, and the way the way that you check and set this now is that you turn the hand wheel towards you until the needle bar is at the lowest point it will go. And you turn the needle bar towards you, not backwards, away from you. So if you turn it, and you see, you can watch uh, the bottom of the needle bar, or the screw on the needle clamp, or you can watch the needle clamp screw right here. But either way, you want to turn that wheel towards you till it bottoms out. Now see, it's starting back up. So you want to turn it until it's at the bottom. Now, when that is at the bottom, the top mark, which is to do with the needle bar height, should be right up here parallel with the very bottom of this bushing. And that's how you set it. That's what that mark is for. So with the mechanism lowered as low as it'll go, the top mark is just about to disappear into the bushing here. And you'll see the lower uh, hook timing mark is there. You see it exposed, okay? but you'll just barely see that top mark. Now, if it is not 
set like that it's very simple to loosen this needle bar clamping screw right here uh, on some models with a different uh, zigzag system uh, this may be higher or not here it might be on the other side and the clamping screw could be on the side so you loosen that about a half turn or a turn and then you move the needle bar up and down to get that top mark right by the bushing and then you be sure that your needle bar is turned correctly you don't want it turned when you're adjusting it so that it's lined up facing the front of the machine and then you tighten that clamping screw and then you can you can check it again you say okay I'll take the needle bar up I'll take it down all the way and there is my mark right there I don't know if you'll be able to see it but it's just about to disappear there that's the first step to do. So, once we've got that set, it's either good or we've corrected the problem. What we want to do now is um, rotate that. I should maybe I should have left that up there for you. We want to rotate that needle bar now towards you again so that this mark which is about an eighth of an inch below now goes up the lower mark goes up that's the timing mark so we lower we turn that until that timing mark is right up about to disappear into the bushing that's the setting to check the timing all right. Of course, you, you don't have to do that first. You can do any anything. You know, you can do some of the rest of this if you want first. But now, what we've got to do is look down inside here and see where is that needle in position to the hook okay so you see <laughs> I'm gonna have to change this just to get the needle bar or the, the uh, needle plate off <laughs> so let's get this up needle up out on this machine I can open this plate all the way and release the clamp remove the needle bar now they suggest for you for you to be able to see down in here you're going to have to remove the bobbin case on your machine on this machine the positioning lever just comes up and swings to the right a little bit and you can use a little screwdriver or your thumbnail it just swings over about a quarter of an inch or less and then I can take out this um, come on over here yeah then I can take out the bobbin case. And you're going to do that so you can see better down in here. All right. Now I'm going to take off my presser foot and thumb screw. So I want you to be able to have a better view of this. And I'm going to remove the feed dog. Now there's no, there's no need for you to do this. Uh, if you can see your hook good, you can get a, a good light down there or even a nice little uh, you know, LED flashlight so you can get light down there where the needle point and the hook point meet but I'm just going to take the feed dog out um, you know as I've done these uh, 
YouTube videos over the last two and a half years, whenever I see a, a video or movie, especially a movie, uh, what I think of as a movie like at the theater, I, I always have come to admire a, a cinematographer and a person who uh, handles the lighting and stuff because it's just so so hard to get lighting into these areas so that uh, it'll show up good on the camera okay but let's take a look here now maybe this will show up pretty good got my little 100 watt LED uh, 100 watt bulb there trying to show it <laughs> okay so now I'm going to turn the needle so the needle bar goes all the way down hits bottom I can see the lower timing mark and I'm going to keep turning until that timing mark comes up parallel with the bottom of that bushing Now you should be able to see that uh, timing mark. You should be able to just barely see it as it's uh, disappearing into the bushing up there. But when it does, the hook point, the point of that hook, should be right behind the point of the needle right behind the needle okay so and my and this is this machine is so I'm done I checked it my needle bar height is correct and now I see my timings correct but first let me show you um, a picture of this how it you know how it should be okay so so you can see it up close instead of with this camera okay so then let me get the hook out here a little bit and you can see the the hook point a little bit better it's right there and you'll see it going around and now now coming back to the back here but my needle happens to be at the peak of the uh, upstroke so the next stroke when the needles coming down and pushing the thread through the fabric as it starts to come out of the fabric it makes a loop on the thread and now my hook point is back around to grab it so if you've got your needle bar height right and the timing mark where it's supposed to be and that hook is point is not behind the needle your timings off it might be a, a, a little bit before the needle and it might be a little bit after the needle and, and either way if you're skipping stitches even every eighth stitch or fifth or twentieth stitch it may be that your timing is off and man, it can be just off a, a pinch, you know, just a, just, I mean, a pinch, just a tiny, tiny amount. And uh, causing that you're skipping a few stitches. So, what we want to do is, if it's wrong, we have to reset the timing. Ta-da, okay. So, to do that on these, these machines... I know the needle's up there, but the hook and stuff is down here. So we're going to come down to the bottom of the machine. And uh, like I said, if you have a uh, timing, whoop, I need a screwdriver to get this open. If you need a, if you have a timing belt, this will work for you. If you have a gearing system. Uh, this isn't going to work for you. <laughs> but I've done other uh, other videos about timing. One that seems to be popular is uh, 
check and set the timing on the Singer model. I think it was model 503. Come on off of there. So we're going to take off our bottom cover plate or the drip pan or whatever you want to call it here. This one hasn't been off in a while. Boy, no wonder my desk is getting all scratched up. Look at these crummy, dried up, broken up <laughs> bed cushions. Okay. So here is the here is the timing belt. Right? The vertical shaft from up above that, that powers everything. And then um, the uh, hook pulley. That's what turns the hook. So, um, to change this, what we've got to do is there is a couple of set screws on uh, the pulley for the hook. And we've got to loosen that so we can turn the hook without turning any of this because this is all connected up above and if you turn this the needle moves up and down you know if you turn this the needle moves up and down so you've got to break that connection so that you can set the needle where it should be and then keep it there while you rotate the hook into position so on this type of machine you loosen these two set screws right to here. See if I can get this over closer. And some of them you use a straight blade screwdriver. See there's one, there's the other. And these are Allen wrenches. These are little Allen wrenches is what I'm going to need. So let me grab an Allen wrench and we'll loosen those up. Okay, so after fiddling around I found the Allen wrench that fits into the set screw on my machine. I know somebody's going to say, well what size is it? And um, it's this size. <laughs> it does, it, they're not marked or anything. So uh, the correct one is the one that fits in the hole in your set screw. And remember, you could just have a, a slotted a set screw that just uses a screwdriver. And uh, be sure you get a good fitting one though, because you don't want to strip it out, you know, trying to get it off. So usually what we got to do, here we go, is uh, loosen them, of course, um, you know, maybe a half or complete turn. Let me rotate this to the other one. Mm -hmm. Now, on some machines, uh, this this pulley, if you have a gear, you know, but the pulley it goes on, it slides on to the end of the hook shaft. And if there's two, that usually means there there is not a flat spot on the shaft but you, you have to watch for that but uh, there's it's very rare for a singer to have to have that situation that's why there's two um, two set screws now I'm just going to go up and with my fingertips and being careful of the point I'm going to rotate the hook and make sure that I can rotate it without this turning. And I'm going to hold the hook with my fingertip and turn this to make sure, yes, this turns but the hook doesn't. Or when I turn the hook up above with just the tips of my fingers, this doesn't rotate. So that tells me that my set screws are, are backed away enough so I can do what I want to do. Okay, And 
Let's go back up here to the front so I can explain this. I've only, I've only got one camera, so i got to move the machine around here so that you can see what I'm talking about. When I say I'm moving the hook with my fingertips, I just mean like this. You know, I'm just changing that hook position. But when I turn the hand wheel, now the hook doesn't move. Oops, careful, don't break my needle. <laughs> hey. So, uh, this is going to give me a chance to carefully uh, turn my hand wheel, take that needle bar all the way down, bring it back up, and uh, stop it when the lower timing mark is disappearing into that bushing. So now I have my needle bar and needle point at the right height. Now I'm going to turn my hook. Where's my hook point? Yeah, here it, here it comes. The hook point's right here. See, there's the hook point that went past the needle. Okay. So I'll take it back. Now it's to the right side of the needle. So I'll just turn it just so that the point of that hook is directly just the tip of it, just the very point. When it's right behind where it should be, you won't be able to see the point behind because it's behind the needle. And you won't see the point sticking out on the left side that you went a little too far. So now everything is right. My timing of the, the needle point to the hook point is set. But how do I keep it there? So I've got to go back down and you can't turn the, the hand wheel and you cannot turn the pulley or the hook and you've got to um, tighten the set screws back up to keep your position. Okay. Now you're going to put your finger up on the top in the center of the hook without turning it to kind of hold it. And then you've got to push this back up. See how it got loose? So you got to push it up against the base of the um, hook holding mechanism. But you can't turn it, right? And if you want, you can peek around the corner and look over the machine and make sure that your hook point is still behind the needle. Oops, I moved mine a little bit. See, showing you all that stuff. <laughs> so let me move my point back. There, now it's golden. And let me check my height of my needle bar. Yep. Okay, so now, here is my, let's see, one's way over here and one's over here. So I'm going to have to work on this one. Whoops. I'm going to have to work on this one, uh, tightening this one up before I turn anything, right? I don't think I got the exact right uh, Allen wrench. I must have. So I have my left hand, I'm pushing down on the middle of the hook up above, and I'm just making sure that this pulley is pushed up against the base of the hook holder 
I haven't moved anything, so I'm just going to snug up this uh, set screw. Come on, you. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not a hundred percent tight, but pretty good. Now I'm gonna. I want to go back and look at my hook point. Yep, it looks good at the needle bar height. Yes, looks good. So I didn't move anything this second time. Now I'm ever so gently gonna turn this so that I can see my other set screw. Okay, and then I want to tighten it up because it takes two, baby. I probably loosen these more than I had to. Um, seems like they they always say just like a half turn or something is enough because the clearance is so close. And that's maybe that's a good thing for me to mention because the more you loosen it to free it up, the more you're going to have to tighten it when you're trying to hold all the positions. Okay, come back around to that first one now and make sure I got it tight. Okay, and if you don't hold the hook from above and push the pulley back up, you're going to get like play in here. It's going to wiggle. Okay, mine feels pretty good. So, pretty sure I'm done with this, but let's let's go back up and we'll we'll look again at the hook uh, to needle timing from up here so I'm going to turn the hand wheel take my needle bar all the way down and keep turning until that um, bottom timing mark comes up and is about to disappear into the bottom of the bushing. And then I'm going to look down here and now I put it back where it was. So the point of the hook is directly behind the needle. When the needle bar stops on the upstroke, where the bottom timing mark is disappearing into the bushing. Mm hmm. Okay. I just wish I don't know if I can. Sometimes when I try and zoom this, the focus goes kind of wonky. But I'll move it. So, now the hook is way past. See it? If I move it around again. Well, let me just move it back against all the rules. There we go. Bring it around. Down comes up right there right there the point behind the needle okay of course then you're going to want to put your uh, bobbin case back in and like I said uh, you don't need to uh, remove the feed dog technically but uh, if you have a nice light when you're sitting here doing it yourself you'll be able to see down there between the 
sides of the feed dog and see the needle and so forth. I took it out just for the filming, okay? So that's how to check and set the timing on the Singer model uh, 413 and many others. And consequently, it's also how to check and set the height of the needle bar. And if you do have to change the uh, height of the needle bar, when you're tightening that clamping screw, you just want to be sure that this has stayed in position, that it didn't get twisted left or right. Because that'll turn the eye of the needle and the thread loop to a different place. And you might skip a stitch. Thanks for watching the timing video here. And I hope you'll come back um, and see me again for the next video on this machine. Take care.